so this is a lot lower resolution than I anticipated, but we'll make this work. Um, so uh, feel free to follow along the uh, addresses up here. Um, there's, I'm just, I'm just going to go through some uh, tips on doing, like working around uh, remote APIs while doing uh, testing on your code. Because um, the, uh, you know, the simplest thing to do without any magic is to just set up a staging server and put some values in there and have your code tied to it, but nobody really wants to do that. And we're Rubyists and we can do anything, so uh, this you know, is a better way. Um, so I have five kind of escalating and hubris tips uh, on ways to kind of address that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk through some code. Uh, and yeah, if you're following along, it's in the uh, spec folder. Um, OK, so the first one is just like just stub, stub away the client. And like this is obviously not amazing, but uh, it's the simplest. And um, if you're working around a well-tested client, then that might be good enough. Like maybe you don't actually care that much about the remote API. Maybe you're testing a certain thing that doesn't depend on it. It's quick, you know, it's obvious. You probably already know about this, but um, it's a good starting point. Um, so what, what I'm testing here is uh, it's like a robot depot where you have like a robot arena and a tourney. It doesn't really matter, but um, the idea is that you have, you're setting up some robots and you're telling them to fight and there's a winner and blah, blah, blah. So this will have this little like tourney class and basically you pass into robots and uh, then you, you know, tell it to fight. And um, so, you know, the simplest thing, if you don't really care about the APIs, you just, like, stub it out, say, uh, you know, expect it to, you know, enter twice and then, you know, receive fight. And then maybe you'll even go as far as to uh, take some of the, uh, ooh, that's kind of interesting, uh, some of the, uh, you know, internal models from the robot arena, uh, which is, this is wrapped around. But anyways, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because it's not very interesting. But um, instead, if you want to actually uh, be able to kind of do a more full integration kind of thing, because the problem with that is that you're actually you're not actually going into the client. You're just kind of stopping at the client. Um, you can actually use uh, like WebMock to uh, kind of catch the calls into net, H net HTTP and then just return some JSON or whatever. Um, obviously, the downside is you have to know what JSON is supposed to return. And uh, presumably, it's not going to be making a bunch of different requests because you have to write code for each one. Um, but in this case, we're uh, writing tests for the, uh, the actual uh, robot arena cloud. Oh, that's weird. No, oh. okay. <laughs> Actual uh, robot arena class, uh, and that's kind of like a client for the robot depot server. Um, so yeah, what this does is you know you kind of saw its usage before. You kind of add, uh, enter some robots, blah blah fight. Um, and the point is that uh, when you enter the robot, it you kind of post it to the server, and then you get back like a rating. Uh, anyway, so um, what we're doing here is we're going to be uh, stubbing out some requests. Uh, we don't really care about the gets because that's just checking if the route already exists. So we're just saying 404. And then for the posts, uh, the first time we're going to do uh, the first the first call is when we went when we enter sissy, and sissy is not very good. Uh, it's just a plastic medium robot, and we'll kind of re just return that uh, JSON along with adding a grade because we know that's what it's supposed to do. Um, and then when it does uh, uh, your robot, then um, you know it's going to return uh, your robot with you know a higher grade because our robot's the best. And then uh, when they fight, it's just going to check that uh, you know the name is actually the one that's supposed to be. So you know again, this is like kind of a little hard coded, not really testing that much behavior, it's, but it's kind of like still going all the way up to an HTTP. So everything in between there is still getting tested. Um, so, you know, it depends on kind of what you care about and like what uh, is going to take a lot of work. Like if you, um, if it's making a lot of different HTTP calls, it's obviously going to be a lot of work to do this right. If it's just making one, then it's probably going to be worth your time to like set up that one HTTP request to get a little deeper. 
Um, but if you are doing a lot of different requests and you don't want to like individually sub them, then you can use uh, VCR, which was mentioned in my earlier talk, actually. Um, and the cool thing about VCR is that it's super, super easy to use once you get it set up. Like in this case, uh, all you do is just you just add the little VCR symbol there. Um, and you know, there's some setup code in the uh, spec helper, which you can check out online. But um, basically then, uh, when it runs the first time, it kind of just catches it. It uh, allows the HTTP calls to actually go through to the server and then records all the responses. And then after that, it like saves them to like a cassette file. It's like VCR, it's kind of cute. Um, but uh, after that, like when you run it again, uh, it just reuses those cassettes and kind of just replays. So the point is that you, you, uh, the first time you do actually have to talk to the server, which is good and bad. But everything, every time after that, it's very fast and uh, very stable because you know, it's just going to be redoing those same uh, responses. Uh, the downside is that uh, if you have to like change what it's doing or test new things, then you might have to re-record. And if you're actually changing something about the server state, then uh, that could be difficult because, like in this example, for uh, for example, when you uh, when you add a robot, it like actually stores it on the server. So um, to make it like happen the same way each time while you're recording it. Uh, I have to do a delete all like after thing, so like sort of as cleanup. Um, and in some cases, you might have to do this manually or something. Like you might have to set up some values manually and then record it all at once, and then you're good. But then if you change it at some point, you might have to have like a little README or something horrible like that about how to do like set everything up and record everything. And you know, if someone else has to come in and do that, it could be a lot of work and really confusing. And they might just throw it all away. Um, but it, if you know, it's for certain situations, it's really nice because it does just kind of work. Um, so, you know, if you're uh, if you're not going to be like uh, you know changing a lot, or if it's something that's really easy to re-record, it can be uh, a really nice choice. But um, if you're doing if you're kind of using the API throughout your whole app, and there's like a lot of different things you're doing, and it'd be like a lot of work to have to re-record every time. Another thing to consider is a fake server, and that's where you actually write a server and um, kind of plug it in in place of the remote server. In this case, I'm using something called Shamrack. Uh, you can also use uh, WebMock, actually. Um, but uh, basically what you do is you say, listen for calls to the server, and when you get it, like instead, uh, funnel them into the Sinatra app. Um, so it's kind of weird because you actually have to like write a server to write tests for a server. So it's kind of confusing. But um, if the behavior that you're depending on is kind of well defined and not super expansive and easy to kind of fake, um, then it can be a reasonable approach. I mean, like this is the uh, fake server here, and as you see, it's um, really not very much code, and it's just like a few calls, and um, it just kind of stores stuff into an array when I add something. Um, and yeah, in this case, it's kind of checking that uh, you know your robot is way better or your robot's way worse. Um, and the reason why that might be difficult to do with VCR is maybe the remote server has some like non-deterministic behavior about like how it grades robots or something. Um, that could be really difficult to write a test around and like use the real server because you don't know what the real server is going to do. So when you re-record it, it could do something totally different and break all your tests. So you might want to just fake the server and have it like do some kind of reasonable, simple approximation of what the reality is, um, and just kind of check the code that surrounds it to make sure that uh, you know it works as expected. Um, so yeah, that's that's an option. This is an option that I, I kind of like. Um, and if you want to take it even further than that, where you don't want to write the server, but you do want to kind of use the server, if you happen to be doing like a server or service-oriented ar architecture, or like releasing a public gem for that has a client to so your API, um, you can actually extract the server and f attach it right to the test itself. So say you're um, say you're releasing a client to your API, and your, ser your service is really simple, and it's not very private or secret. So you just take the Sinatra app that runs your server, 
and like make a modular way to kind of have the database and all the you know service stuff that it has to do. Um, like in this case, uh, the uh, database, which is just an array, but um, I'm kind of you know have a little way to set like re set the database to something else. Uh, then you can include that in your client, and then you can have some kind of like fancy method that uh, you know runs Shamrack and attaches it to the uh, URL. So when someone's testing your server, they can just hit, they can just run that command, and then everything from there on will hit the like actual server code, but like not on the actual server. Um, and uh, so the advantage of this is that it's like almost as if it was really talking over the wire to the real server. The only difference is like the few things that you change, like the database or whatever. Um, so this is really awesome when you can do this. It's like the coolest thing ever. And uh, I got to do this at my last company. Um, and it was just awesome because like the whole pipeline between the client and the server was super tested. And like there are all these sort of like full integration tests included in the gem because uh, you could like write tests against the gem and then attach the server. And then like on the server side, you could, uh, you know, include that gem and uh, in the tests, you could like test the server and then like attach the client to the server when you do the test to test the server. And then like on the client side, you can attach the server to the client and then like in all your application code that depends on the client, you can have like a sort of full integration with the server. And none of it's using the wire. You don't have to do any recording. Um, really cool. Um, so yeah, that's uh, kind of, that's pretty much everything. And yeah, if you want to check out these tips, they're uh, at that URL. And I did a little, uh, whoop, did a little write up for, uh, back. Uh, sorry, my mouse is being kind of weird. Linux, yay. Um, yep, there it is. And I kind of summarized what I was saying. Um, and oh my god, we're hiring, so you should totally join us. Yeah, referral candy is awesome. Join us. Apply now. Okay, thank you.